Hi, I'm Dave Brisky, and I'd like to welcome you to this week's program on Brisky Business. Once again, thank you for making me part of your day. Uh, anytime you have questions or topics that you're interested in, please write me at briskybusiness at entvusa.com, and I will take your questions and integrate them into the program. You know, like I've always said, this is your program, and it's all about you. Now, generally, you can find uh, the information in, in past episodes on the ENTV USA app. So go over there and check us out. They're getting more and more downloads on that app, and I'm super proud of what uh, NTV USA is doing with their programming, and I'm proud to be a part of it. Uh, Brisky Business is typically four segments, right? Brisk Business Basics, Brisk Buyer Bail, Brisk Bulls and Bears, and Brisk Best and Brightest. And we try to do a bit of mentorship. But once in a while, every three or four programs, what we like to do is go back to the listening audience and answer some questions. And we, uh, we've accumulated several questions uh, since we've had so many guests that have been on the program. And I really want to thank all the guests. We've had some amazing people on the program. Uh, but this one I'm going to have to fly so so we'll start off with Brisk Business Basics. And I'm going to go ahead and read a question that I got from Anita from Fort Worth, Texas. So allow me to read this. She said, hi, Dave. I really enjoyed your show featuring Jack Brewer. I'm from a town about 12 miles from Grapevine, Texas, which, of course, is where Jack Brewer is from. And so she was very impressed uh, by this guy. And I'm impressed by Jack Brewer, too. It was a joy to have him on the program. And she had two questions. So we're going to just start with her first question, which she said that Jack and myself, we both spent time talking about building a team and related that to sport. And it's interesting. We've had several athletes on the program, and they, there seems to be this continual parallel between sports and business. And, and I get that. And so when we look at uh, what's going on between sports and business, uh, there's a lot of similar principles. So this is what Anita was asking about. And she asked us to break down uh, the process between the principles of sports and how she might be able to implement them at work. Uh, she let me know that she had a print shop with about 15 full-time employees. So a nice, nice business there. Uh, so congratulations on that. So when we really talk about marrying business principles and sports, I think really we have to start off with who's the coach, right? Who, there has to always be someone who is in charge, you know, that CEO or that owner or whatever. I'm not one big in the titles. I think we just need to know who's in charge out of trust and respect. But we do, do need to know who the coach is, right? For the Dallas Cowboys, that was simple. We had Drew Pearson on the show, and that was uh, Tom Landry. Or in the, uh, obviously, uh, in New England Patriots, that would be Bill Belichick. He doesn't have to say he's the head coach. Everybody knows it. And so when you're running your business, you need to make sure people know that you're the head coach of that team. So the speed of the leader is the speed of the pack here. The pace you run, your team will run. If you're not running at a proper speed or you're disappointed of the pace that your team is running at or your uh, group of employees are moving at, the best thing you can probably do is look in the mirror. And coaches do that all the time. So the next thing I think you have to look at is culture. What do you want your organization to look like? And we're going to spend a lot of time this week on culture. It's a topic I've been wanting to get to for quite some time. It is so important. And really, every organization has a culture, uh, whether you wrote it down or not, or whether you think you do or not. It is just the way your business is operating. So. Let's get into culture in detail and describe how to create a culture document. But before we get there, I ask you this question. Do you have the right people in the right spot? You know, that's what it's really going to be about in the beginning. Anita talked about her team with 15 people in it. You can't have them all doing the same thing, obviously. Can you imagine an NFL team that only consisted of linemen? or an NBA team that was just made up solely of point guards, it would be extremely difficult to, uh, to win a championship with that type of team. So we need to make sure that we're putting the right team on the field, and that, that is complementary. And in smaller businesses especially, we need to make sure we've got duplicative coverage 
right? We need to make sure that there's a backup for every position so that we can have a culture where time off could be allowed. Or if you needed uh, to be home with a loved one, you'd have a backup, no matter how uh, what size that position is. So we need to have that really dialed in in our culture, but you've got to have the right people at the right position. Uh, and one other thing, I like to tell a story about what can happen with different cultures. Uh, as you know, my uh, career prior to this was with the great Drew Pearson. We had a business together called Drew Pearson Marketing. And we um, integrated or merged with a Minnesota company. Now, first of all, you can imagine that a Dallas cowboy who actually caught the Hail Mary merging with a Minnesota company, which was the company the Hail Mary was caught against, we already were starting off on a really bad foot, right? I mean, you are talking about the, the, a, a, a catch that Drew made that really put a, a spear in the hearts of Minnesota fans, and all of a sudden, all these Minnesota people are involved with a Texas company, and the leader in the name on the door happens to be the guy, Drew Pearson, who caught that pass. So we weren't really starting at a good position. But we realized very, very quickly that culture was going to be critical. And we noticed that there were two very different cultures between those two organizations. And we suffered and we floundered for the first six months with that, those cultural differences. Tons of end fighting, tons of challenges, tons, tons of silos being built in the business, a lack of working together. And we, we learned very, very quickly that if we didn't come up with a compatible culture, in other words, these two companies together establishing their culture, that our road to success was going to be extremely difficult. So we went to work on that. And, you know, I say this, and I've said it on prior segments, and it's definitely a brisk bit, that if you can't write it down, it can't be done. And I find it very important to be able to write your culture down so that when people come into your business, they can understand the culture, they can understand what the goals of the, are the businesses in terms of its culture, and they can buy into it during the hiring process to be part of that culture. So what are you going to do in a situation like this where two companies came together with two completely different cultures? How are you going to meld that into one culture? So what we did is we took some time and we took the teams on both sides. We took the team from Texas and we took the teams from Minnesota on basically a retreat. That's how important culture is. And we took them on this retreat. And the good thing about that was everyone got to know each other a little bit more. And when we did that, we then set off on a mission of establishing our culture. Now, here's the interesting thing about that. The first thing you have to do when you're going to try to establish a culture is you have to understand what your current culture is. And many, many folks say, well, you know, our company doesn't really have a culture. Every company does. It is the way, it's the norms, the value system of which your company is operating under. It just automatically forms. And so what you have to do in the case of a merger is we needed to sit down with all of the teams on both different companies and sit down and talk about what our culture really was, what those things were important to the Minnesota company, what those things that were important uh, to the Texas company were, and identify those things so that we could really understand what the culture was. And so that was about a 10-day process we went on a retreat. We broke it up into, we covered the weekends because one of the things we wanted to focus on is work ethic and making sure we were in our business during work week. But we did a series of long weekends, two of them, uh, not back, back to back, where we started on a Thursday and went through a Tuesday and really sat down and did that hard and difficult homework of looking in the mirror and establishing what our culture was, what the strength and weaknesses of the company was, what the value system was, how it differentiated between the Minnesota group and the Texas group, and then go ahead and try to identify that. Let me tell you something. That is an absolutely huge, huge project to get there. The disagreements that took place on culture were critical. But I'll tell you this, that project was pivotal into the company going from a floundering company, a struggling company, a company with end fighting, a company that wasn't operating like a team, to a company that became a team.
That process melded us together. That process gave us a common vision. That process allowed us to become the company that we ultimately became. And by writing it down, by taking the time to write down and create a culture document, we were able to hire people in to that particular culture. When we recruited people, we knew the type of people we wanted. And also the people that accepted a position in this newly created culture, they knew what they were signing up for. They knew what was important to the company. They knew the value system that was established. They understood the philosophy of the company. They understood what was normal. They understood the most important principles within the business. And we started to fly as a company. And we started to find joy in the company. And what I want to do on the next segment, which is Brisk's uh, buyer bail is I want to get into the decision making process that went into buyer bail and help you understand if your organization would like to establish a culture, how to do it, and I'm going to get granular with you so you understand the steps and I'll even go through what that culture ultimately looked like at Drew Pearson. What a great project it was. It was the difference maker. It helped us guide every one of our decisions and I'm really excited to share it with you. So I'm going to wrap up up Brisk's business basics here and understand this basic business principle make sure you understand your culture that's a basic one and we're going to dig deep into it in Brisk buyer bail and I'm going to conclude this segment at this moment so we can hear from some of our sponsors and we'll be back in a moment with Brisk buyer bail I'm Dave Brisky with Brisky business We are ENTV USA. Log on now and check out our live shows and subscribe. You don't want to miss this. Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Linea Deportiva, a sports line. At 7 p.m., O Que Chisme, the best celebrity gossip show with Odia Abreu. At 8 p.m., Punto Final, another angle of news. 9 p.m. Mondays and Wednesdays, we have Alo Cortez with Tony Cortez. Tuesdays at 9 p.m., Dame Un Like. Thursdays, also at 9 p.m., De Noche Con Roche. Fridays, 9 p.m., Mas Con Mas with Raul Mascanosa. Every Wednesdays at 4 p.m., we've got Brisky Business with Dave Brisky. Followed by Inmigración en Fronteras with lawyer Irving Gonzalez at 5 p.m. This is our programming for ENTV USA from right here in Miami for the rest of the world. Con una vista. Basta. Show some love and give us a like. As you age, the collagen that helps keep your body in optimal physical condition breaks down faster than your body can replace it. But now it's easy to give your body the healthy dose of collagen it needs with Collagen Creamer from Longevity. It's a delicious vanilla-flavored coffee creamer that's packed with 7.5 grams of bovine-sourced collagen peptides. Longevity's Collagen Creamer uses two types of collagen to better supply the protein needed to repair and strengthen the connective tissue in your body. It also supports healthy hair, skin, nails, and even bones. We've also formulated Collagen Creamer with MCT, healthy fats that the body is able to absorb and convert into an instant boost of energy. Add it to coffee or one of your other favorite beverages when you need it. Longevity Collagen Creamer. Support for healthy connective tissue and more energy, all in a tasty vanilla-flavored creamer. To learn more, contact your Longevity associate. Paying attention to your overall health also means focusing on the command center of it all, your brain. Factors like stress, lack of sleep, poor diet, a sedentary lifestyle, and the bombardment of pollutants and toxins can all diminish brain and neural functions. When was the last time you concentrated on your brain health? Synaptive by Longevity is a cutting-edge, unique brain support supplement that delivers powerful nutrients both immediately and throughout the day. Its anti-stress nutrients provide instant brain-boosting support that helps with mental focus and cognitive activity. To enhance your body's neuroprotection, Synaptive's full-spectrum antioxidant blend targets six major classes of free radicals that inhibit brain function. This powerful nutrient combination also promotes healthy blood flow to the brain. Synaptive, optimal antioxidant neuroprotection and support for a healthy brain. 
Now that's something to think about. To learn more, contact your Longevity associate. to avoid exposing other people. Maintain a distance of 6 feet whenever possible and cover your nose and mouth with a handkerchief or mask when in public. Avoid hugs, handshakes, and big reunions as well as events indoors. For more information, please go to floridahealthcovid19.gov. This is a message from ENTV USA for the community. Welcome back to Brisky Business. You know, this would be a good time for you to grab yourself a nice cup of coffee, brew it up, and get yourself a pen out. Cuz I think taking notes for this show is going to be paramount for you cuz I think there's some things you can do for your business that will really really help it cuz we're going to dig in the culture. This section is about Brisk's buy or bail. Well, we had to make a decision continuing with last segment on should we try to establish a unified culture within our business. That's a buy or bail decision for us. We could have just said, "Wow, that's too much risk. We may upset the company we merged with because they had a certain culture. We may then rock the apple cart in the Texas culture, or should we take the risk and try to put it all together?" And so we really did write it down and think about it. We were afraid we might lose good people, but we realized after 6 months of actually bailing on trying to create a unified culture that that was a bad strategy. That we needed to have a unified structure and a unified culture. and we needed to come together as a company because we were not performing there was a lot of end fighting a lot of hand grenades being lobbed a lot of back talking and we just weren't going to have that in our company so what did we do well we we're going to create a culture document and uh, it was that process and we had to take people off site and it cost us money and all of that but we started to realize that that investment was one we couldn't afford not to do we had to make that so get out your pen first thing you got to do is you have to understand what culture is okay and i always say you have to be able to write it down so the goal of your company is to establish what your culture is and that takes some of that honest work really looking in the mirror and figuring out what's important for you as a company so let's just broadly look at culture and what makes it up first of all i would write this down there's actually three parts to it okay culture is the overarching part of what you're trying to create and here's what it consists of the values norms and philosophies so culture then what is it culture is your organization's personality it's the glue actually that holds your organization together so it's that glue that you and the stronger you make it the stronger the company is and it consists of values attitudes beliefs behaviors practices of organizational members uh, it encompasses expectations norms rituals communication patterns symbols symbolism think about that what are the symbols you know that means something in your company heroes and reward structures all companies have these but have they defined it uh it culture is very difficult to quantify as you can see and it's difficult to evaluate because it's made up of big big things which are the easy ones but lots of little tiny things and you need to know those little tiny things how they come together to establish what your culture really is it encompasses all that the organization does and it determines the organization's readiness to act and more importantly to change and what the process is for that deep down in that culture So culture is really the present manifestation of the past, the challenges and successes, mistakes and lessons learned that help you shape your future. 
right? That helps your future be shaped. So the present manifestation of the past, what we learned, make changes, and what is going on in our future. And it becomes the organization's memory. How important is that? Understanding your organization's memory. It guides behavior and provides a sense of identity, stability, and organizational boundaries. So very important. The organizational memory I want to just touch on just for a minute. You know, ultimately, we talked about merging two companies together, but we did end up merging another division that was a company based in China. Wow, did I learn a lot about culture from the Chinese. They celebrated every year's birthday of the company. I never saw that happen in America. I find that odd with failure rates. They didn't celebrate their victories. They didn't. They they celebrated victories, but in the United States that didn't happen. We may I may have seen a hundred year celebration, but I never heard of a one year or two year or three year or four year celebration. But the Chinese were great at this. They celebrated being in business. Wow, what a great memory that is, right? Memorize, remember how important that birthday is. Remember and celebrate that we made it another year, that we are thriving another year. Really, really big cultural difference between what was going on in those parts of Asia and, and particularly China in our case and what was going on in America. So I love the idea of the organization's memories being documented and, and uh, being there for us to look at uh, as we move on in our ages. You know, within these boundaries, people gauge the appropriateness, uh, appropriateness of their thoughts and actions and determine the norms and values from the organization's cultural rules and beliefs. So we're gonna set up those boundaries when we create this culture document, and then we're gonna go right down into our rules and beliefs so that we understand exactly what they are. So in the culture where values are shared and enthusiastically embraced, uh, employees can make decisions that positively affect the company. Think about it. Once they understand that value system and they know what's acceptable, they're free now. Your employees can thrive because they know what's acceptable. They don't have to move through business sheepishly. They know what they can do. They know they've got the support of the company and they know how it'll work. When organizations seek greatness, they often find aspects of their organizational culture that need change. So what does that mean? Your culture is a breathing thing. As your business evolves, it's gonna change. As it expands or even contracts, Culture may have to change some and you may have to tweak it or you may have to keep the eye on the prize where you establish the culture to make sure you don't lose those core values that were there when you started the company. So in all organizations, formal and informal values, philosophies and norms interact to create the vibe and that vibe is what we call culture. Okay, so that's where we're heading. What is the vibe of your company? Have, can you document it? What are you celebrating? And we're going to get into that value system now. So I said there was three areas of it. And why don't we roll into values and at least define it as we conclude this segment? So what are values? You know, I get that question as well. Like, oh, you want to establish a value system? But what are values? So values are deep-seated beliefs that you feel strongly about. Typically, they encompass beliefs about the world and how it operates. They're emotional guidelines that govern the behavior and our attitudes. Values determine our choices, including those that are in our organizational context. Values determine our choices, including those that are made uh, by all the employees. And employees learn about company values via their actions and the actions of their managers, of course, and by observing these behaviors. Right? We want to speed of the leader, speed of the pack, manager, what's their culture? They're going to watch that behavior, especially somebody new, and see what their value system is. And when you observe the executive team and the key managers and employees, they'll become acquainted with many of the organization's values, including how the company treats its people. How critical is that? How does the company treat its people? Very, very critical piece. And how the company spends money and what the value the company places on company time. That is key to the value system. Uh, we, when we set up our 
uh, values, we actually came up with seven core values. That's where we landed, that drive the company and contribute greatly to its culture. So this is where we started when we went to value, and we had to figure out what those seven were. And here's what I would advise you to do. Get a big whiteboard, get everyone in the room, and start throwing out those things that are super important. And there's going to be a lot more than seven. But one thing you don't want to do is try to have 100 values. It's just too much to actually get everyone on the same page. We're talking core values. We're talking about those things that are absolutely critical to your value system. And if we work really hard, we can land on those core values. And what we're going to do is we're going to come back uh, on the next segment and we're going to talk specifically about the values we set up and we're going to get into the other parts of culture to help you be able to define the culture in your company and establish a culture document that's written down. And if you'll write me. I'll even share a template with you. Write me at briskybusinessentvusa.com and I'll get you a template that'll help you establish a culture that'll take your company to the next level. Uh, this is Dave Brisky. This concludes uh, this segment of Brisky Business. We'll be back. Are you looking for high entertainment and energy in your media? Download the ENTV USA app now. You're not going to want to miss what we got to offer. We are ENTV USA. Click and subscribe. Con una vista, basta. Your body's immune system is under constant pressure from things like stress and toxins in the environment. It's crucial to be proactive and support your immune system. Introducing fast-acting Zinc Plus Immune Support by Longevity. Unlike zinc-only supplements, Zinc Plus Immune Support builds on the proven power of zinc and adds complementary nutrients, while our proprietary blend of natural fruit and root extracts provides the extra help your immune system needs to work against daily stressors. And we've included Longevity's exclusive plant-derived minerals to give your body the minerals it needs but can't get from food alone. And because Zinc Plus Immune Support is delivered in a great-tasting, sugar-free, berry-flavored lozenge, it encourages quicker absorption of all these nutrients into your body. Zinc Plus Immune Support. Zinc plus the extra support your body needs to promote a healthy immune system. To learn more, contact your Longevity associate. Super Greens is a one-of-a-kind blend that's loaded with hard-to-find nutrient-dense superfoods. We've used what we've learned from our more than 20 years working with mineral-based nutrition to create one of the healthiest, plant-based nutritional products available. Each superfood was carefully selected so that it complements and enhances the others, helping to maximize Super Greens' nutritional power. Next, we added a specialized fermentation technique to increase the bioavailability of each superfood. Finally, we put in powerful probiotics and enzymes for added digestive support to give you jam-packed nutritional support. Longevity Super Greens, the highly alkalinizing super supplement that helps balance your body. It's the superfood-powered way to get more organic fruits and veggies in your day, all in just one scoop. Check with your Longevity distributor to learn more. Antioxidants are essential to protect your cells against the damaging effects of free radicals. Pumeric by Longevity harnesses the power of nature to combat free radicals by delivering a potent boost of antioxidants known for their incredible healing properties. Sourced from certified organic turmeric root, Pumeric contains 95% curcuminoids, the active compounds that quash free radicals. Turmeric has been used in Ayurvedic and Chinese medicine for thousands of years to promote both heart and brain health, as well as its powerful anti-inflammatory properties. We've also included a botanical blend of phytonutrients that include flavonoids, carotenoids, and sulfides. These natural, plant-based chemicals are powerful contributors to overall health and well-being. Pure Merrick, the organic antioxidant supplement from Longevity, formulated to promote optimal health. To learn more, contact your Longevity associate. 
Just because you're a certain age doesn't mean you have to look it or feel it. Immortalium by Longevity was developed to support your body's ability to age normally and healthfully. It's an advanced anti-aging supplement that combines the most effective essential nutrients in a cutting-edge, bi-layered and extended release tablet designed to support your telomere health and natural aging process. Telomeres are the biological clocks within your cells that form the protective ends of almost every chromosome in your body. Telomeres help prevent the chromosomes from deteriorating. The longer and healthier the telomeres in a cell, the greater the health and anti-aging benefits. Immortalium contains synergizing antioxidant enzymes and telomere health-promoting nutrients that are quickly absorbed to give your body time to break down the antioxidants and put them to work. Immortalium, advanced anti-aging support that can help fight the natural aging process. To learn more, contact your Longevity associate. Understanding your microbiome can change everything you thought you knew about nutrition, digestion, immunity, and metabolism. Ultimate Microbiome by Longevity was specifically formulated to optimize this ecosystem. It provides the advanced support your gut needs through prebiotic, probiotic, and postbiotic supplementation. Our unique blend of probiotics includes lactobacillus and plantarum, healthy bacteria, which has been shown to aid in weight loss, sleep, mood, and may even help with seasonal allergies. To enhance digestion, Digizyme Multi-Enzyme Complex, a blend of five specific enzymes, has been added to Ultimate Microbiome. It can help break down food so your body can better absorb nutrients. Ultimate Microbiome, the scientific, proprietary, and holistic approach to gut health that helps optimize your body's entire gut ecosystem. To learn more, contact your Longevity associate. Welcome back to Brisky Business. This segment of the normal program is risk bulls and bears, but this is gonna be all bull, bull, bull on this uh, end of the program. And I mean, when I say bulls, I mean the positive stuff, the positive things in culture and the importance of establishing it. So we finished up, we were really getting to our core value system, and I said I would actually share that with all of you, and that's what I'm gonna do right here. And I'll give you some of the actual uh, values that we came up with. And I told you we came up with seven core values, but in reality, we couldn't narrow it to seven, so we lumped some together. So we really have seven core values, but some of them uh, you'll see were similar words. And since there was a debate going on, we just included them. So let me run through those seven core values for you. So the first one, and this is going to help you establish your value system because now you're getting the examples, right? You're like, maybe I still don't understand what the value system is. So our first one that we came up with was, and like I said, we lumped it in together. So it was integrity, honesty, respect, and professionalism. We felt like that was the same kind of value system. So that was the first core value, integrity, honesty, respect, and professionalism. And you can see that they're similar. And then we described it, right? which is easy to do. So I'm not gonna get into all the descriptions, but basically you write down that each staff member will be completely honest and forthright, genu act with genuine sincerity, treat others respectfully. You get the picture. The second core value we had was one simple word, profitability. We felt it was really important to value profitability because we felt it could govern our decision making. And if there was spends that we couldn't make, we could always go back to that core value and say, well, profitability is important. Uh, it's one of our core values, and this is going to take away from that. So unfortunately, we're going to have to pass on that. And that's the point of the culture, right? That it drives your decision making because everyone understands the core values. The third one uh, was uh, one where we had to combine a few words, and that was passion and enthusiasm. I don't know how a company can survive without it. I don't care if you're a stoic accounting practice or if you're an unbelievable internet company or if you're selling surfboards. Passion and enthusiasm is critical, and that's going to attract your best people. So that was the third value uh, in this project that we did. The fourth one was extraordinary service. Uh, we saw service dying. I think it is still dying in our country, and I think if we, uh, if we would focus on extraordinary service, it would be a difference maker. So that was a core value. Teamwork was number five for us. And, of course, I'm not going to describe all these because some of them are ob obvious. Uh, loyalty. 
was a big one for us. And understand, we were bringing two companies together, so the loyalty factor to the overall success of the company was absolutely critical. And if we couldn't have it, uh, we weren't going to tolerate it, and uh, we were going to make sure we had a loyal team. And the last one for me, and you can probably know because I talk about the brisky work muscle and all of that, hard work with excellence. Uh, we went back and forth combining these. We were talking about excellence a lot, and we were talking about hard work. And going back and forth, we decided, you know what? We could combine those two as a core value. So now our, we're going to work hard, but we're going to do it in an excellent and extraordinary way. So it wasn't just enough to work hard, and it wasn't just enough to be extraordinary. We had to combine the two, and that became our value system. So hopefully you learned a little bit about values now with some examples that you can put in the, your own practice within your company. So let's switch gears a little bit and get into philosophy. A, it, you, a lot of them sound similar, but I want you to understand the little nuances when we get to philosophy. So philosophy essentially is how we view the world in which we live, and it represents the attitude toward life, right? Little deeper here, okay? Each individual looks at the world with a different set of lenses. Isn't that a fact? Have you ever been with three or four different people and they see the same thing, but their perspective is totally different? That's because we all have lenses based on the experiences that we've had heretofore. And those lenses have, uh, impactful, uh, uh, have impact on what we see because of uh, pain we may have gone through, joy we may have gone through, whatever it might be, education that we have, and so our lenses are there for us. And so we need to understand that we all look at the world a little bit differently. Some, some view the world wearing blinders, uh, which I'm sure many of you know what I'm talking about, and others have a broad view. There's no right or wrong there. Some are super narrow focused and some have this broad view or the 30,000 foot view. That's great. That makes for a great company. But we need to understand in our, in our philosophy that this exists this way. So our corporate community's attitude and vibe is directly linked to our corporate philosophy. Our philosophy exists because of the following key attitudes. And this is what you want to then create and document. Because if you can't document, philosophy is just too nebulous. You just can't get your arms around it, right? It's probably why there's 10 commandments, right, in the, uh, in the Catholic Church, right, or in, or in Christian or Christianity, right? That really kind of brings it home, right? The Bible's like this much books, and we bring it home to some core philosophies. So let's talk about um, what some of that might look like. So for us, our employees are our greatest asset. Number one, we wanted everyone that came into the organization to know that, and we wanted everyone there to understand that they were appreciated at that level. That was a philosophy. Uh, we'll always treat each other with trust and respect, paramount to me. I don't think you can run a company without that. If there's not trust and respect from top to bottom and within your peer group, you're gonna have a very difficult time moving the needle at your company. Uh, each individual will have to understand that they're a critical part of the team and that they're accountable for meeting the company goals. That's everybody. It doesn't matter what your role is. And our staff will always have strong trust in management. Now, understand that. That is earned. Management just doesn't get that. Management has to earn that, right? Just like trust and respect is important, but management needs to earn that trust and respect and understand the philosophy that we said that our employees were our greatest assets. Critical, critical, critical. So we also said this is a second philosophy for the company that would govern us. We all believe that extraordinary service to our customers, both internal and external, is the key element for success. Did you catch that? Internal and external. External is our customers, essentially. Internal is our internal customer, right? When one department has to depend on another. That was one of our philosophies. We're gonna provide that extraordinary service in either case, really closely linked to trust and respect. Uh, we all have experienced a fall off in good quality service provided by the majority of organizations in America. And so we thought this was really important. 
Uh, we believe that our competitors and we had strongly believed that our service initiatives uh, driven by customers' needs will lead us to extraordinary achievements. Let me read that again for you. Uh, we believe that in America, including our competitors, and we strongly believe that our, our company's service initiatives driven by our customer needs will lead us to extraordinary achievements. Once again, that was a second philosophy, our philosophical view of our company. And then the last one in philosophy was we select and retain, because we knew turnover was very expensive, training very expensive. So we're going to select and retain employees that have great attitudes and truly committed and consistently exceed their job requirements. We really believe that the staff that we have, our team, is the best of the best that were extraordinary. If you're on this team, you're on a team of great players. We trust and respect one another. Have you gathered this now? Do you understand what philosophy is? Philosophy then becomes critical. So when you're recruiting now, how much easier it is to describe your company. We would make everyone keep the culture document handy at their desk. We actually required uh, each one to read it. We'd like them to read it once a week. Just kind of take it out and peruse it. And particularly when you're hiring or writing a job description, when your customer or when your potential recruit asks you a question, and the question is, what is it like to work there? Well, our philosophy is this, and everybody knew what it was. And can you imagine what it would be like to say, we only hire the best of the best. Our team is extraordinary. For you to get on this team, you gotta be the best there is. Can you imagine how your recruiting would change if everyone on your team believed that and found that type of joy in their workplace and were committed to that leather to be extraordinary, to buy to provide extraordinary service, how great would that company be? And I will tell you, great. The answer is great by defining those philosophies. So these were the philosophies that we came up with. You can come up with your own that really works for you. You should never try to copy someone's philosophy. It has to be in your core tenet. It has to be in your heart. And if you document it and write it down and you bring a team that believes in those same philosophies, you will kick butt. You will make stuff happen. So I'm going to wrap up here this segment. Uh, I really enjoyed talking to you about it and really digging into philosophies. And we're going to wrap up with norms uh, as we really explore culture here on Brisky Business. We'll be back in a moment. Antioxidants are essential to protect your cells against the damaging effects of free radicals. Pumeric by Longevity harnesses the power of nature to combat free radicals by delivering a potent boost of antioxidants known for their incredible healing properties. Sourced from certified organic turmeric root, Pumeric contains 95% curcuminoids, the active compounds that quash free radicals. Turmeric has been used in Ayurvedic and Chinese medicine for thousands of years to promote both heart and brain health, as well as its powerful anti-inflammatory properties. We've also included a botanical blend of phytonutrients that include flavonoids, carotenoids, and sulfides. These natural, plant-based chemicals are powerful contributors to overall health and well-being. Pumeric, the organic antioxidant supplement from Longevity formulated to promote optimal health. To learn more, contact your Longevity associate. Cardio Beats from Longevity supports a healthy cardiovascular system and helps supply the nutrients your body needs to support better physical endurance. Your capacity to last a little longer is largely based on how well your cardiovascular system expends oxygen and circulates blood through your body. Cardio Beats helps combat the oxidative stress caused by physical activity by supplying you with key nutrients that support your cardiovascular system. These nutrients have also been shown to help improve endurance. 
Cardio Beats starts with organic beets, a rich source of nitrates to support healthy blood flow and oxygen transport. We've added whole foods from highly bioavailable seaweed and mango fruit, both known for blood flow support and antioxidant-rich sweet cherries. Then, for even more heart health benefits, we finished it off with key amino acids. Take your physical endurance to the next level with Cardio Beats. Talk to your Longevity associate for more information. As you age, the collagen that helps keep your body in optimal physical condition breaks down faster than your body can replace it. But now, it's easy to give your body the healthy dose of collagen it needs with Collagen Creamer from Longevity. It's a delicious vanilla-flavored coffee creamer that's packed with seven and a half grams of bovine-sourced collagen peptides. Longevity's Collagen Creamer uses two types of collagen to better supply the protein needed to repair and strengthen the connective tissue in your body. It also supports healthy hair, skin, nails, and even bones. We've also formulated Collagen Creamer with MCT healthy fats that the body is able to absorb and convert into an instant boost of energy. Add it to coffee or one of your other favorite beverages when you need it. Longevity Collagen Creamer. Support for healthy connective tissue and more energy, all in a tasty vanilla-flavored creamer. To learn more, contact your Longevity associate. Understanding your microbiome can change everything you thought you knew about nutrition, digestion, immunity, and metabolism. Ultimate Microbiome by Longevity was specifically formulated to optimize this ecosystem. It provides the advanced support your gut needs through prebiotic, probiotic, and postbiotic supplementation. Our unique blend of probiotics includes Lactobacillus and Plantarum, healthy bacteria, which has been shown to aid in weight loss, sleep, mood, and may even help with seasonal allergies. To enhance digestion, Digizyme Multi-Enzyme Complex, a blend of five specific enzymes, has been added to Ultimate Microbiome. It can help break down food so your body can better absorb nutrients. Ultimate Microbiome, the scientific, proprietary, and holistic approach to gut health that helps optimize your body's entire gut ecosystem. To learn more, contact your Longevity associate. Stop the COVID-19. Maintain social distancing. The best way to prevent the sickness is to avoid exposure and to avoid exposing other people. Maintain a distance of six feet whenever possible and cover your nose and mouth with a handkerchief or mask when in public. Avoid hugs, handshakes, and big reunions as well as events indoors. For more information, please go to floridahealthcovid19.gov. This is a message from ENTV USA for the community. Welcome back to Brisky Business. And this is the final segment. We're into Brisk's best and brightest right now. And really, this whole show has really been about mentorship and trying to help you have a wonderful culture in your business and establish it. It will be a difference maker for you uh, if you go ahead and, and put the hard work into establishing it. So we've gotten through to the final piece of setting up a culture and documenting it and put it in writing. And I've been giving you those examples. So we've made it to norms. So let's go through what norms are and uh, define those for you. And then we'll move along through the program. So Norms are living expressions of underlying values. I know that seems a little count complicated, but go back and listen to the value section. So it's the living expressions of that value system. They govern the way in which we treat others, and thus in turn, this affects their attitudes. Norms determine the type of interaction we have with our colleagues and uh, what level of fun the company has. Because business can be fun, too, and it should be. Uh, not only is it fun, it's what level of creativity, what level of passion that we bring to our jobs. That's what we're talking about when we talk about norms. And so I'm going to describe some of those norms for you that we can bring to the job, if you will. So it doesn't, we don't have to use that word job, right? It's such a negative word, this is my job. But you know, if this is my career, it sounds so much better. Or this is the place where I have all my workmates and we just rock it, you know, we're really kicking butt, we're moving the needle at our company. So let me give you some norms. The first one is, is be visionary. 
I loved that norm for us. And what we did with that norm is we told everyone to be visionary. We wanted that newest hire to be visionary. We had an expression, fresh eyes, are the best eyes because as you're there in a company for a while you start to walk by things it's like a filter they get numb but that new person we want to encourage them to be a visionary we want them to ask why why does that stuff have to sit over there it looks so ugly when you walk in the building and everyone's just walking by it they don't see it anymore be a visionary that was the first norm and let me tell you something that pays dividends people like to know they can have an impact on the business they go to work for on their first day Think about that. How would you like to go home your first day at work saying, man, I, I made a difference in the company I work for today. That means a lot. Second, and you probably would guess this would be under uh, this for me, is trust and respect. You don't have that, you don't have a company. Trust and respect is built by keeping promises. It's plain and simple. If you say you're going to do something, damn it, you just do it. That's what trust and respect is all about. If you tell your workmate you're going to get them stuff so they can hit their deadline, you make sure you hit that deadline. And I always said that's the reason that the word dead is in the word deadline, because you should die trying to meet it. That's why they call it deadline in my book. Or you should be dead for not hitting it. That's the only excuse for deadline for me. Third is people, okay? People is critical, right? Our company begins by hiring the right people in all the positions at all the times. And our hiring practices are critical. And we're looking for people with passion and enthusiasm. And it's more important in my mind to experience an education in our system that we put up. Did you hear what I just said? Passion and enthusiasm is even more important than experience and education. Because with passion and enthusiasm, you can overcome a lot. Okay, and above all these, we manage with compassion. Very, very important. So that's putting that, if you go back and read the whole thing we went through, think of what that's really doing in our culture, particularly when we talk about people and our employees being our greatest asset. And then the last, uh, last two, there's two of them, is ABCs. And ABCs for me is always be celebrating. And we definitely uh, could steal a chapter out of uh, the Chinese culture over there. They celebrate that work anniversary, the number of years they've been in business each and every year, especially those bigger anniversaries. Kind of the way we do it, right? I mean, think about it. You know, uh, this, my 58th birthday celebration might be decent, but my 60th is probably a big one, especially for the women, right? I mean, no offense, but you better be celebrating those 10 decade numbers for the women in your life. They deserve it because they have to put up with guys like me, and that is not an easy thing to do. So we make sure that we celebrate those big birthdays or those big anniversaries, and the company should do that as well. So always be celebrating. And the last one uh, under this segment is strive for excellence. Very simply, we expect to be the best and everyone in the company should feel that way. So I'm hopeful that this definition and this description of culture and how it's set up is meaningful for you. It's something you can put into action. You can establish your norms and your philosophies uh, and make a difference uh, and build a culture and document it and hand it to your team and revise it when it needs revising. Okay, so there was a second part to that letter. I know we've only read one letter, but let's go ahead to the second part of that letter. And this is what she said. It says, you and Jack always talked about being honest with your opinions and even in disagreement, not rejecting the opposing opinion or retaliate against the person with it. I think you and Jack were relating that what is going on in our world with the election, the parties, and even the riots and the violence we are experiencing in our nation right now. You also talked about CP time. Uh, yeah, I got a lot of feedback about that, by the way. And, as, uh, and, and she said, as a black woman, a Democrat, and a Southerner, I really believe you and Jack have unlocked the missing piece of what our country, why our country isn't unified. I believe more people need to fully understand why you brought this up. And if you can speak a little bit about this, I think it would make a difference for the better in unifying America. I think it would help. And so it was interesting, right, um, to get this. I actually got a lot of feedback, and you can go back and watch the Jack Brewer episode if you would like, and you can hear that discussion about CP Town. So go back and check it out. But what it's about is really making sure that um, we focus on knowing it's okay to have uncomfortable conversations. 
That's what it really was all about, about being okay to have uncomfortable conversations. Understand that stereotypes are real, that blacks or African Americans or whatever word you want to use or Asians or Chinese, we get so hung up on what is the word of the day. At the end of the day, they're stereotypes, white, stereotypes, southern, northern stereotypes, all these stereotypes, but they're real and you have to be able to talk about them and joke about them and have uncomfortable conversations. Jack said it great in the episode. He said, humanity teaches us that we're all one, but identity teaches us that we are different and that's where we become disconnected. That identity disconnects us because we think there's some identity that we have to follow. And that's not always the case, okay? Let's go ahead and have the real conversations. This is what isn't going on. Let's check our emotions and let's go ahead and make stuff happen. Let's ask that stuff. Um, color and uh, identity don't really matter to Jack and I. Jack's, you were on the show. Jack's a black guy, I'm a white guy. Drew's a black guy, I'm a white guy. I love those guys. I love the relationship we have. I love the conversations we have. Some of them are uncomfortable because I learn. I'm deeply learning. I want to understand the struggle. I know the struggles are real. But if I don't have the conversations, then I don't understand the deepness of it, the emotion of it. And that's when you can really build a relationship. If you think about your relationships, your great relationships, they're built because they're genuine. They're built based on honesty. They're built based on integrity. This is what's missing right now that I'm seeing. This is what the media is portraying. We've got to put an end to this and we have to get down and dirty and real and get in the ditch together and understand what's going on in people's lives and cry together and laugh together. And if you think of your best relationship, if you really think about your best relationship, it's someone that you probably had a cry with, a real cry, a real laughter with. And when relationships form there, they're bonded together. They're bonded together because they're real. So the rhetoric is in saying identity is dividing us versus learning and joking about the, and understanding it. We can't lose humanity because we're all one blood. That's what Jack said. We can't lose humanity because we're all one blood. But identity tells us that we are separate. I want relationships with real people. I want relationships with real honesty. That's what that segment was all about. Sharing, cutting up jokes, understanding uh, the extraordinary people we all are, understanding the stereotypes, understanding the inside jokes and being able to laugh together instead of pulling our punches and worrying about, oh my goodness, may I say a off-color comment. We got to stop pulling our punches, folks, and having real, real conversation. Get in your hearts. Get in with your folks. Get to understand different cultures of people. Get to understand that there's different races and understand their challenges and build relationships with integrity and love. And if you do that, you're gonna have relationships that go coast to coast and around the world. I'm Dave Brisky. This is Brisky Business, and I've loved talking with you this afternoon. Thank you.